Adam, come on, hop in. I'll take you for a ride. So where are you going in such a hurry? Anywhere. Just out of the house. Are your old man taking target practice on your face again? He's not my old man. He's my mother's boyfriend. OK, so bite my head off next time. Sorry. Guess I get a little edgy after being used as a punching bag. Yeah. I'm going to Arizona. Arizona? When? As soon as I score some bucks, you want to come? Well, I don't know. I mean, what's so great about Arizona? About 100,000 miles away from here. That's what's so great. Yeah. Oh, cops! So, we're not speeding or anything. That's not the problem. Gary, no! You're carrying pot! Some pots, a bar with a little dust. What a world-class jerk. Hey, Gary, what way? Get your hands up where I can see them. Step out of the car. Hands on the car. Hey, when's this ball gonna start rolling anyway? I, mean, I took off a whole afternoon to come down here. Who asked you? You know something, Rainey? You've got a really smart mouth for someone as much trouble as you are. Paul, don't start. Not here. I mean, she's just damn lucky that she didn't get booked with a hippie boyfriend. Drug possession and car theft is serious. Business. He said he barred it. I didn't know he was dealing to the cops were on this. Paul, let me handle this. Arini, darling, don't you understand now? It's the people you associate with that cause you all the trouble. Sorry, Mom. But I'm not too thrilled with some of your friends either. And there she goes again. It's a good thing for you and your old man's lawyer, because I would have never bailed you out of this one. I'd rather rot in reform school than take a dime from you. Well, that's just where you might be had a little girl. Better there than at home where you can beat on me hey, when you're Hey, now, you just right. put that on Save it, you two. Is this the way you're going to behave when you go in front of the judge? Janet, did anyone say when we'd get in? There's some people in there now. We're next. Really? It's very important when you go into the judge's chambers that you make a good impression. Oh, well, which impression would he like? I do a good with lots of remarks. Why do you make it so difficult for me to try to help? Well, I'm sorry you had to drive all the way down here. But you shouldn't have bothered. I can take care of myself. Let's go in. Couldn't you have worn something else? I'll go home and change. Come on, come on. Come on. Sorry, friend. This is just family. This report is very disturbing, young lady. It seems you've been in and out of trouble uh, some time now. Well, it's a crowd she runs with, Your Honor. Rini's really a very nice girl. It's her friends who cause her harm. Oh, I hear that so often, Mrs. Lake. But if you could give her one more chance. I have the social worker's recommendations here. She's not very optimistic about Rini. What are you saying? Mr. Lake here has petitioned the court for a temporary custody of your daughter. You went behind my back to take her away from me? Wait a minute here. I got something to say about this. You cut out on us years ago, and I've seen you exactly six times since. Now that you have your own nifty little family, your life's filled with country clubs and backyard barbecues. Well, Mom and I live on a third floor walk-up, thanks to the lousy 150 bucks you sent us a month. At the time of the settlement, that was all I could afford. But since then, I've sent much more than that. I'd be fair, Rini. Just, I don't fit in with those people. We're not on the same wavelength. It won't work. Very well, Rini. Uh, you're a bright girl. I'll leave the decision to you. It's either your father's house or two years in a juvenile correctional center. Which is it going to be? Marlene, we're home. Rainy. We're 
so glad you're going to be with us. Thanks. And here's the bedroom. Gretchen, you remember Rini, don't you? Uh, we brought in another bed when we knew for sure you were coming. All the drawers in this dresser are yours. And, oh, the closet. You can have as much closet space as you need. I don't need much. Well, I think I'll leave now and let you two get reacquainted. You planning on a long visit? Not if I can help it. Well, that's probably just as well. I mean, this room is quite cramped, actually. And it wasn't really intended for two people. Let me assure you of something, little sister. I don't care for this arrangement any more than you do. Well, I'm not your little sister. I'm only two months younger than you are. But we aren't even related. I uh, hate to be a stickler for technicalities, but for the past six years, we've been sharing the same father. Well, you just listen. Just don't touch me, all right? I don't like to be touched. Yeah, could you show me where my first period English class is at? Are you related to Gretchen Lake? Not to hear her tell it, but yeah. You mean you haven't heard? Heard what? Well, all about Gretchen Lake's notorious steps. <laughs> I figured everyone had gotten a Gretchen Graham by now warning you about me. Gretchen and I don't exactly run around the same crowd. She's sort of cliquish, I guess. Popular, as you can see. I'm sure where Gretchen's concerned, we both fall in the same column. Mm. Guess that sort of makes us sorority sisters, huh? Yeah. Hey, we've got second period together. Look, I'll show you where your English class is, okay? All right. So anyway, it's But I came home early just so we could sit down and talk to her together. Russell, I asked you to tell Reenie about it days ago, and you kept putting it off. Now you'll just have to do it yourself. Maybe after dinner, you two can sit down and discuss it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. After dinner. I'm going up to change. Of course not. You, you just startled me a little, is all. You don't have to do that. I'm not a guest here, Marlene. I really don't mind. I'm sure you don't. It's just... I saw Russell's car outside. He's home early. One of the few times that he is. What's a special occasion? No special occasion. I've got a women's club meeting tonight. Your father wanted to be sure he was home for you girls before I left. How considerate of him. Rini, have you always called your father by his first name? No. When I was a little kid, I called him daddy, same as any other kid. But why did you stop? I guess after he left us, I didn't feel like any other kid anymore. I didn't see him much after that, and it seemed kind of silly to call it almost stranger daddy. He wanted to see more of you. He invited you to come visit us many times, but you always refused. Why? I guess you don't know what it's like to have someone run out on you. Wow. 
What do you suggest we do this evening? Just the three of us. Well, we could play cards, or we... Sorry, Dad, but while he's coming by, the bunch of us are going to go over to Sharon's house to study. Well, that's all right. In fact, that's fine. Rini, I think you'll like Sharon. She and Gretchen have been friends for years. Dad, Rini isn't invited. Why not? Gretchen, I ask you a question. Rini's your stepsister. I expect you to help her make new friends. Well, what can I tell you? None of the girls want to be around her. Suits me fine. Well, it doesn't suit me. Can I help it if her reputation preceded her? What's that supposed to mean? It means that everyone knows that she's a crook and a pothead. Well, that's enough. I'll not have that kind of talk in this house. Gretchen, we're a family now. And I expect us to act like a family. Excuse me, but I'm going to be late. I know it isn't easy, settling into a new school, making new friends. Yeah, right. Listen, I'd like to be excused myself. Rini, just a minute, I have to tell you something. I made an appointment for you tomorrow, Dr. Bancroft. Who's he? Dr. Bancroft is a woman, she's a psychiatrist. A shrink? No way, I'm not going. I'm sorry. That's part of the custody agreement. Neither of us have any choice in the matter. But why? Why didn't I know about this before? Because I knew you'd react exactly like this. When did it happen? Just now. I went to the house down the road, and the man said someone here was good with animals, so I ran here as fast as I could. Poor dog. You'll have to excuse me a minute. I left the kettle on. Will he be all right? I asked if he'll be all right. I'm sorry, I didn't know. I, I didn't know. You read lips. Hmm. Will he live? I'm sorry, I should have told you about Jan. If he didn't answer you, it's because he's... I know, he told me. I thought you could use some of this. Oh, thank you. I didn't get to introduce myself when you came in. My name is Margaret Redner. This is my son, Jan. Rini Lake. <coughs> he may 
only be in shock. He won't know for a while. Your name is Rini? Is that a R-E-N-I-E? Yes, ma'am, short for Irene. He says hello. <laughs> Hi. Is your son a veterinarian? Someday, I hope. He's applied to most of the schools, but some of them won't accept him because of his so-called handicap. He reads lips really well. Yes, but lip readers miss a lot. Sometimes, sometimes people don't look at them when they speak. Must be tough. No. He gets by with sign language very well. He uh, gave the dog a tranquilizer to make him sleep. He'll take him to Dr. Sarno's office in the morning for x-rays. He says, don't worry. And he wonders if he could drive you home. Oh, it's 10 after 9. Yes, please, I gotta get home. What'd you say to that guy? I told him to mind his own business. <laughs> yeah. Say, my name is Wally. I'm sort of a friend of your sister's. I'm sort of not. Yeah, I know what you mean. Gretchen can take some getting used to. I'm not even sure if I have the time. Look, Wally, you might tell me what this is all about. I'm kind of busy here. I, uh, you know, thought maybe we could get together some night. Go out, have some laughs. Okay. Look, here's my number. Feel free to give me a call. Here's my number. As for Gretchen. Now, Rini, tell me about yourself. What about me? What do you do? Any hobbies? No. You like sports? No. What's your favorite television show? I watch Life to its Fullest sometimes. Well, the soap opera. What do you like most about it? I don't know. Who are the characters? You mind tell me where all this is leading? Well, we're here to talk, aren't we? So let's talk. There's these two sisters. Kathy, she's married to some good-looking lawyer who wants to be a governor or something. And Megan, she's the youngest and goes to college. Which one do you like better? Megan, I guess. Why? She's nice. Isn't Cassie nice? She's OK, but no guts. Well, how's that? See, her husband's having this huge affair, and everybody knows it but Cassie. I don't understand. What's that got to do with guts? Cassie's always the victim. Well, what would you do about it if you were Cassie? I'm not Cassie. Of course not. But pretend. If you were Cassie and you heard that your husband was about to betray you, what would you do? I guess it'd be all over. That's it? You wouldn't do anything? No. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> I found this book in the library, and I've been practicing for a couple of days. Why? 
just wanted to be able to talk to you. Oh, where's the dog? Where's the dog? Sorry. It's just the way I am. There's a lot you don't know about me, Jan. How's your new boyfriend? Jan Redner. Really, Lenny, did you have to settle for a retard? Don't say it's something you're gonna regret. I suppose you make the perfect couple. Deaf and dumb. You can call me names and spread all the filthy lies you want about me. But don't you ever again breathe one bad word about Jan Redner. Tell me something. What changed your mind? About what? About me. Wally, you're not going to hold that little scene we had in the library against me, are you? <laughs> Captain of the wrestling team, president of the student council. Do you think if I would have known all that, I would have acted so weirdly? I thought I was another clown hitting on the new girl, right? It's happened before. Gretchen, hi. Do you know Wally? Hi, Gretchen. Join us? <laughs> okay, Wally, show's over. You're excused. What are you talking about? You served your purpose. What is this? We have a date Friday night. Are you kidding? You think I'd be caught in public with a bozo like you? Oh, well, sweetheart. There's an old saying, Wally. You can take the girl out of the street. But you can't take the street out of the girl. I guess you're a pretty good example of that. I'll see you around. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How was your afternoon with the vet? Wonderful. You should see how Doc Sorno is around animals. What are you doing with my bike? Rini borrowed it. But it's my bike, and I didn't give her permission. She's right. I, I should have checked with her. Never mind. Rini can have the old thing. I don't care. But she had just better keep her claws off of anything else that's mine. What's with her, anyway? I think you threatened her. I threatened her? Mm -hmm. Well, you see, Rini, my first husband had two boys of his own when we got married. Even as a little girl, Gretchen felt nothing was hers, just hers. With you here now, I, 
I think she feels it's happening again. Give her some time. She'll come around. Look, Gretch, it's that thing with Wally. I'm sorry, okay? I mean, hey, I can't stand the guy, really. I mean, he's a bubble-headed jock with eggs for brains. So you can have him back, okay? It doesn't really matter. Once Wally gets to know the Rio Rennie Lake, he'll find out what a street tough you really are. Do you know what would happen to you if you said that to anyone back in my old school? I suppose I'd get my throat slit or something. But you keep forgetting, Rini, dear. We are not back at your old school. We're on my home ground. And I don't need to resort to violence to take care of you. I'm a lot smarter than you are. I've had my way with Mom and Dad for an awfully long time. Don't forget, you're on probation. I pull the strings around here, and I can make things very uncomfortable for you. He's kind and gentle, and I like being around him. How's that? Did you tell him about your past? Yep. I dumped my whole lurid history on him. What do you think about it? He accepts it. He says the past doesn't matter. What? <laughs> He sounds very wise to me. Now, tell me more. Oh, look, Dr. V, I don't know what else to say. Jan's my best friend. We do things together. There's this vet he studies with, and I go with him on farm calls. Boy, I like it. I just get such a high off helping him with the animals, and, and we work well together. That's it. That's the whole thing. Oh, come on. That never's the whole thing. Now, what attracted you to him? Well, well, he's real, you know. I mean, he's always right up front with me and... And, and what? And Jan's deaf. Uh-huh. But even so, he listens to me better than anyone else ever has. I mean, he looks at me right in the face and listens to every word I say. I'm learning sign language, too. Jen lent me some books, and I'm getting pretty good. Well, I'm impressed. Sounds as if you've worked very hard. You, you remember your soap opera? Mm -hmm. I wonder if, if Cassie would have worked so hard for someone else. Uh-uh. She's too passive. Megan might have. Yeah, Megan would. Why would she? Because she doesn't want to be left alone. Hello? Yes, uh, she is. Just a minute, please. Rini! Telephone! Hello? Gary, hi! How are you? Oh, you're kidding. Well, I'll leave it to you to get off on the technicality. But I'm glad for you, though. Well, so what else have you been up to? Oh, Wally. Wally, you're terrible. <laughs> what if somebody's listening? You know, you can get in trouble for talking like that. <laughs> Never mind, Gary, just a joke. Me and my good time sister are always teasing each other. Sweet. Oh. You're always teasing me. <laughs> all right, enough of that finger talking, you two. For all I know, you might be talking about me. Sorry, Doc. It's just that I need to practice. Well, you get the hang of it, all right. You're a fast learner. But then I can tell that by the way you handle some of my patients. Oh, thanks. Now, by the way, did Jan tell you the good news? No, what news? Well, he's been accepted at Penn State. Nothing much. 
Stay in there. That's right. Good. Fine. Didn't even flinch. On time, Rini. Give it to me. I carry it. Call it force of habit. Now give it to me. I know it's illegal. But don't think it hasn't come in handy. Where I come from, more people carry these than carry handkerchiefs. I didn't, I didn't grow up in a squeaky clean world like you. And I knew that sooner or later, you'd see something to hate me. People. And every time I do, they pull away. How can I? Why didn't you tell me you got accepted to college? When's the right time? What, just after you packed to leave for Penn State? Have a good trip. Don't you want to sit down? I want to talk. We'll talk as soon as you're relaxed. Now, please, try to get hold of yourself. Now, tell me what's happened to put you in such a state. Don't play games with me, Rini. I'm waiting. Jan's leaving. He got accepted to a school. Well, that doesn't mean he's walking out of your life. Yes, it does. We sort of got in this argument. Jan finally got to see who the real Rini Lake is, and he doesn't like her. The real Rini Lake? What do you mean? I think I'm crazy. No, I won't. Tell me what you mean. Well, sometimes, sometimes I feel like that game show where three, three people come out all claiming to be the same person. You feel like three different people? One's, one's a little girl. Happy, normal, with a full-time mother and father. Real never never land, you know. Then there's this girl who's always in trouble. But she has to act tough, you see. Because all the people she knows, well, they take advantage of her if she ever acts soft or anything. And the third girl? She's sort of a she's sort of a mystery person. I mean, she's trying hard to change and to do all the right things. But then the other two keep getting in her way. Tell me something. What happens when the man asks the real Rainy Lake to please stand up? Nothing. Nothing. I mean, they just all sit there and stare at each other, wondering who's going to make the first move. And you think that Jan saw one of the other Rainy Lakes 
And he's changed his mind about you. I don't think so. I think he's much too smart for that. Look, i fooled people before. I've made them think I'm one thing, and then the real Rini leg always comes out and ruins it. Gretchen knows who I am. She called me street tough once. And that's exactly what Jan saw today. Did you talk to him about it? Instead, you had to put on this act. You had to show people how tough you are. No matter what they do to you, it doesn't really matter. Ah, oh, well, in reality, it eats your heart out. Oh, Rini, don't you see? It's a defense. You've, you've got to throw away this tough shell of yours and, and give people a chance. What good would it do? It would do you some good. You seem to think that if people see you as a true life human being with feelings and emotions, they'll back away and abandon you. They always do. No, not always. They do. What if you get hurt sometimes? It's not the end of the world. You're not a piece of antique glass. You won't break. Oh, Rini, what impresses me most about you is your strength and determination to go on. I fooled you too, Dr. B. You see, I'm not as strong as you think. Sorry I bothered you. Gary, it's Rini. Yeah, right. Hey, listen, I know it's awfully late and everything, but I'm sort of in a bind. Are you still going to Arizona? I want to go with you. But see, the thing is, we gotta leave at the crack of dawn. I know, I know, but hey, things are really getting bad here, and I gotta get out. Well, so what do you say? Is it go or not? Oh, thanks. Now let me tell you how to get here. What? <laughs> Sure, my brother. Oh, well, was he expecting you? Nah, thought I'd surprise him. Yeah, but what if he's not there? Then we'll be surprised. How's that, huh? Like the car? Yeah, terrific. Oh, I got one more favor to ask you. We gotta go someplace to drop something off, I borrowed. But it won't take long, I promise. Where are you going so early? Oh. The horse sick again? I'm losing this town, Jan. I've stayed too long already. People like me can't stay put for long. I tried to tell you that. Oh. No, 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 it's all right. It has nothing to do with you, honest. I mean, you have your life and I have mine, right? Would have never worked anyhow. We're too different. Whether you believe it or not, it's true. Hey, Rini? I thought you wanted to hurry. Hey, well. I'm coming, all right? What? Oh, boyfriend. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, 
Gary and I, we go way back. We were, uh, we were busted for car stealing. I just said I was a car thief. Doesn't that shock you? Bye, Jan. The main drag ought to be up here about a mile. Then we can start putting some real distance behind us. He didn't believe me. What? Who? I didn't fool him for a minute. You know what he told me, Gary? You know what he actually said? I didn't hear him say anything. He said, if I'm a car thief, then he's a French poodle. <laughs> he saw right through me. He knew it was an act. I couldn't fool him. One of the few people I can never fool. Well, what's the story with a guy anyway? Is he deaf and dumb? He's deaf, Gary, but the word's mute, not dumb. God. Gary, he's been deaf since birth. Hasn't heard a single sound. But do you realize what he's done with his life? Gary, take it easy, baby. What are you going to do? I mean, what's your big goal in life anyway? To score enough bucks for some pot? To always stay one street light ahead of the cops? Just look at yourself, Gary. If there's anybody in this world that's dumb, it's you. Well, nice talk, Rini. You know, I don't need this. Uh, I guess I'm no better. Running to nowhere. Leaving behind people who really care for me. But I don't have to be dumb for the rest of my life. Stop the car, Gary. I'm getting out. Oh, come on, Rini. This is no time for comedy, all right? You don't see me laughing, do you? Gary, this is my one chance to finally do something right in my life. And I'm not going to blow it. Now pull over. I'm getting out. You know, I drove all night to get my butt up here for you. Just who do you think you are anyway? My name's Rini Lake. You're nuts. And don't call me again, either. <laughs> 